Stage 7 of La Vuelta a España is said to be a transition day, which means that it's, you know, there shouldn't be any big shake-ups in the GC. But with the Tour of Spain, you just never know, do you? So currently I am working on this image of the breakaway. I have named this Essence de Breakaway because I'm not picking out individual characters and really describing them in a detailed way. I'm just making an essence of it. And I'm keeping it very loose in this new style that I've been talking about and just seeing what happens. And there's a huge breakaway today. of something like 20 riders or something. Uh, and it looks like the, they're solo down on the general classifications that the peloton, guided by Team Sky and primarily Kristen Kinese and Ian Stannard, who are protecting Chris Room, who has the red jersey, they're going to let them get away because they had the highest rider up in that group is eight minutes plus behind Chris Room. So they're not really a big danger, although Chris Room and Team Sky will have to keep them in contact. So they're kind of being led to, they're, they're being allowed to do what they want. And I thought I'd catch this because it's a stereotypical scene of any tour. You have this uh, breakaway, which you kind of slowly get to know, and then some riders break off. But anyway, this is how it starts. It's this kind of blob of colour, which are slightly, no offence to the anyone in a breakaway, they're slightly nameless. And I suppose that reflects that in this picture. Also, shout out to the cameraman. I've gone on about this. This has been the most recurrent motif in my videos is that I love the camera work of these nutty bike men in Spain. You don't get this in France and you can see in this picture that he's getting down low and that is how he's doing it. I don't, I, I maybe I haven't seen it in the Tour de France but they do it a lot more rarely, a lot less often getting these exciting shots so I doff my goro to the old cameraman. Next up we've got this what I think is um, a really strong image I've just seen Team Sky riding along and leading the peloton and it looks like something from some kind of apocalyptic scene, which is absolutely awesome. They've got this this clouded background and it looks like a storm is a Bruin. So I've tried to get that in there. Um, this picture here is of, I think, I'd imagine, Ian Stannard and Christian Kines. I've depicted them as two cycling shapes from Team Sky and it kind of represents their effort. I'm really happy with this picture and how it's going because the the storm background becomes what is known as pathetic fallacy um, where it the weather mirrors the emotion of the scene or somebody's emotion and I think here it really shows the effort that these guys are putting in and that they are causing a storm for the the riders behind who are trying to uh, keep up with them. Um, so there's two of them. There are more than that, more than two riders for Team Sky ahead of Chris Room trying to protect him. But these two really made the composition nice and balanced it, and it made them sort of look like they're blasting off into the unknown there. And any more than two, I think, would look like just a load of riders. Whereas this looks like a sort of valiant effort. And I'm very happy with how the backgrounds turned out, and it's a very simple image. But very powerful. Pucho uh, did a really good job today. Uh, fucking strong. I don't know how they do it. <laughs> uh, Something which is an important part of any Grand Tour is the countryside. Because it's not just a race for the race narrative. It's also a race through a land. And it brings people together. And you can kind of celebrate the particular country that they're, they're in. And this is what it looks like in the east of Spain. They have this kind of barren, what I think is quite the Hobbit-esque, the, the book The Hobbit by Tolkien, the landscape where it's all kind of a bit farmery and the colours are more earthy and brown. And it's more barren, It's more there are more swathes of empty, randomly laid out fields. It's not as ordered as, England, ordered as England and France. And I thought I'd try and reflect that here. You've got these, these browns and like I said, um, these sort of earthy... This chap... Morich, I think you say his name. He's a Polish dude, he's 22, and apparently he's quite a talent. Today, he broke away from the breakaway, which was, there was a lot of looking around to see who was going to do the work. Thomas de Gent, of course, was in there. Shout out to him, well done him. Uh, he's always in the breakaways. And there were people going off ahead on the climb, which was, I think, about 30 kilometers from the end, maybe 20. And 
So they would go up, they'd come back, they'd get caught. The p guys in the breakaway would break away. Then the other guys would go, hey, should we go and catch that guy? Yeah, let's go and get him. Then they go, no, no, you do the work. Then there's confusion. And so there's this constant toing and froing. And in the end, it was this guy, uh, the Polish man, uh, Morich, who managed to make it up the climb and descend as well and make it away on, make it away on his own uh, to the victory, which I thought was really brilliant. And he's so young and it was a really, I thought a really beautiful ending as well, actually, just with the whole, the, the climb up through the cobbles and through the arch and then the descent on his own in this kind of Sagan-esque. Someone on Instagram has told me it's not Sagan, and I've also heard that from the commentators in Eurosport, but Sagan's the one we recognise with that style, as well as Chris Froome during the 2016 tour on stage eight when he descended in that strange shape. Here I am in Regent's Park, going around the outer rim. Loving it, I'm doing three laps before I start doing the Vuelta stuff. Strawberries? Blueberries? I'm assuming you can't read here. Mango. Mango. Kahunks. <laughs> Magic touch. Let's try it. Good. Like, amazing, amazing. Pear. Guess what that is in Spanish? Pera. <laughs> Don't know what that is. It's brown. Nectarine. I'm, I'm going to guess that's nectarina. <laughs> no joke. Mango. Mango. <laughs> okay, apple. It's not apple though. Manzana. Like manzana postobon. I'm going to eat this now. Of course. I think you already knew that, didn't you? Plastic fork to remind me of eating in fields, which I really enjoy, like in festivals and stuff, and being outside having fun. That's why I like plastic forks. I also like troughs, because they're slightly bigger than bowls. That's actually what's in here. I'm out! Oh, 